Good morning, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everybody is having an awesome uh, start to their week. I'm hoping that you had a great time last week. Those who celebrated the holidays, I hope you enjoyed it. Those who celebrated time with family, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it ended on a positive note, whether it did or didn't. We're going to start the week out on a positive note. We are going to take the lead in establishing the environment in which we're going to experience life because we're going to start the week out in a state of gratitude. And I am excited about being here. I wanna once again, thank everybody who took the time out to send well wishes, to inquire about my health and recovery, I'm pretty much back. Um, a couple of slight lingering things, nothing to be concerned about, but. Uh, it's definitely uh, a wake-up call about being even more intensively involved in my well-being, not just mentally and emotionally, but definitely physically. And so we're in the middle of a 60-day challenge. Uh, those of you who want to participate in that, uh, the link is inside of the description box. You can click it and go to the Master Fitness 21 uh, Facebook page uh, where we are uh, in the middle of a 60-day challenge, you start your challenge the moment that you come in and uh, click the like button and start participating. Uh, there's a wealth of information. Much of it is free, but there are also some uh, unbelievable paid resources, anything from virtual training. If you're in the Houston area, uh, direct personal physical training uh, program, uh, uh, custom program uh, creation for whatever it is you want to accomplish, whether it's mental, emotional, financial, uh, physical. Uh, we're doing the whole things. I've taken Master Fitness 21, which is the uh, extension of my first company 30 years ago, uh, Stay Fit Fitness and Training. Uh, and I've also brought in the Visionetics Institute, another one of my companies that focuses on the mental, as mental and psychological aspects of personal enhancement. And through this, we are doing the 60 day holistic health and fitness challenge. Uh, we're inviting you in for that. We don't wanna wait until we get to December 31st and move into January 1st with a new year's revolution. I mean, a resolution that we're only going to invest in for a couple of weeks and then fall off because we haven't established a ritual of excellence. Uh, this ritual ex excellence is, has to be habitual, meaning that you have to create something that you're doing every day. And you have to do it that way for 21 to 30 days consistently, and then it becomes habit. We want to create the right habits. Uh, and th that doesn't come through resolution or declaration alone. That comes through practice. And so we're going to go into the year with momentum. So I invite you for that. Okay, it's Sunday. I am not going to take too much of your time up, but I am excited. Also, if you haven't gotten the books, the links are in there. If you want to work with me directly, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, the uh, information is in there, how to do that. And I invite you in. I have a few slots available. I would love to take you into the new year uh, on the positive note. I would love to work with you. So uh, if that's something you want to do, definitely reach out. Okay. Uh, you know, with social media, there is the pros and the cons, the ups and the downs, the good and the bad, the ins and the outs. And if you hear something in the background, my grandson is here. My grandson is here and he's giving people the business. So we, uh, might, you might hear that. So um, his dad should be on the way. Hopefully he'll be here in a minute. Um, but, uh, you know, it's all love anyway, 
uh, with social media, the one thing that you have to be careful with is you get a lot of people and they get to you get to present your life in the framework and context that you desire. And that has, again, pros and cons. I'm, 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 I'm more about transparency in the sense of what needs to be transparent. Obviously, you don't need to be in my personal life and my personal business, but you know I love my wife uh, because that's something I'm open about. You know I love my kids. That's something I'm open about. You know that I own business and businesses and that I've experienced certain levels of success over the course of my life. I'm open about that, but you are also aware that that did not come without hiccups, that did not come without setbacks, that did not come without failures, that did not come without frustrations, that did not come without people talking behind my back, it did not come without sitting up sometimes wondering what in the hell have I gotten myself into. All of that is a part of progressing through life. And so I, as much as I like to talk about success and much as I like to talk about where I'm at in my mindset and why I'm able to do what I'm able to do, the truth of the matter is I face some difficult moments. I just just uh, face one down, be ending up in the hospital um, in uh, critical care for a while. Um, and that's like the third time in the last five years uh, after never having been in the hospital uh, before that. So uh, it, it, it's something that's significant and serious, but it's something that I have the ability to control and I will conquer. Uh, but things come along in life, you know, uh, having a bunch of uh, material wealth and then having it snatched away because of arrogance, stupidity, and uh, a number of other things that I'm willing to admit I had a major role in. Uh, and then having to rebuild from scratch, meaning I literally started from ground zero to get back to where I am today. And uh, it's, it's, it's amazing in that sense, but it's nothing less than what I expected of myself, but I went through some things. And the thing is, I see a lot of people fold. I see a lot of people fold under pressure. I see a lot of people fold when things aren't going that way. I said a lot of people fold when difficulty rolls in, when they experience delay, when they experience setbacks, when they go through the difficulties and the hardships, they fold. Why? Because a lot of the times they've been watching people talk about how, how, how awesome things are and they haven't seen the dark side of the struggle. They haven't seen the, the, the unavoidable, unavoidable process. I tell people all the time, it, it, it's good to know the promise of your design. It's good to know the promise of uh, of your relationship with the divine, the, the 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 superior being on this work with God. It's good to know there are some things that belong to you, but you also have to understand that for there to be a an experiencing or an obtainment of the promise that must first be an endurance of the process. You don't get the promise without the process and the process is challenging. The process is uncomfortable. The process can be frustrating. The process will push you backwards sometimes. The process will have you questioning your motivations. That's a part of the game. There are some times when people were looking at me and shaking their head, they couldn't understand how I was smiling. They, they couldn't understand how I woke up with optimism in my mind and in my spirit. They couldn't understand how it was that no matter what I seemed to go through, I always had a mindset of victory and never defeat. I never played the victim. I never whined. I never complained. I never finger pointed. And they couldn't understand why I could face things. And it's simply because I'm built for it. And that's something that I would remind me. Sometimes you won't have the answer right away. Sometimes there will not be an immediate resolution to the enigmatic issues that you're facing. Sometimes you're going to be in a situation where you look around you and nothing seems to make sense. And there's still something you can do. That in those moments where nothing made sense, where there didn't seem to be any immediate resolution or answer to what I was going through, when it seemed like everything around me was crumbling, there was something inside of me that I understood that held me together. I would get myself up. I would literally walk into the restroom. And I would look myself in the mirror. I would stare myself in the, in the face, in the mirror. And I would say, you're built for this. And I would say it again. You are built for this. You're built for the battle. You're built to overcome. You're built to endure. You're built to stand ground. You're built to accomplish everything that you've set out to accomplish. 
This failure is not permanent. It is not final. You will win. You are built for this. I tell myself, I'm built for this. You see, 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 see I, I lost businesses and money. I'm built for it. I ended up alone. I'm built for it. I was ostracized. I'm built for it. I've lost loved ones that, 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 that I love dearly, but I'm built for it. See, I'm, I'm built to stand. I'm built to push through. I'm built to hold on. I'm built to become everything that I have set my mind to become and more. I am not going to falter and fail and fold because it gets hard. See, it's easy to talk about all the things. We can talk about all the things that, that I've done. We can talk about all the things that I'm, cur I'm, I'm currently doing. We can talk about all the projections, what's going on. But at the end of the day, do you have inside of you what it takes to stand? Does your faith set a, 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 a projection and an anticipation of victory? Do you believe strongly enough in your relationship with the divine, with God, that you know no weapon, you know, formed against you will prosper? Is that just something that you say? You don't know how many times the world seemed like it was crashing in and I had to gather myself, look myself in the mirror and say, I'm built for this. I don't know how I'm getting through it right now, but I'm built for I don't seem to have the answer I need, but I'm built for this. Listen, you are built for it. Life has prepared you for what you're going through now. It, it, it's probably uncomfortable. It's probably frustrating. It's probably a little scary, but let me tell you something. You're built for it. You, 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 you're, far, you're, way more, you're way more stronger than you think you are. You're built for the battle. See, you, you, you've been through some things that you've you probably forgotten how you've overcome it. In the Bible, in Lamentations, Jeremiah thinks about some of the things he's going through, but then he starts to look back and think about all the things he's been through and how he overcame it. He said, these things I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. When I start to look at how many times I could have literally been dead before the age of 18, when I think about all of the things that could have gone wrong that could have ended my life and I'm still here, it says I'm here for a reason. I'm built for this. When I look back and I say, man, if that didn't take me out, I've got to be here for a reason. I'm built for it. I'm built for adversity. I'm built for set. Backs. I'm built for criticism. I'm built for hatred. I'm built for everything that I'm going to have to face in order to be everything that I need to be. There's nothing that can shut me down but me. I want to tell you right now, I want to encourage you right now, I want to let you know right now that you are built for the battle. You are built to win. You are built to stand strong. You are built to press through. You've got to start waking up with a mindset of gratitude. You've got to start waking up with a heart of thankfulness. You've got to start waking up with a mindset of positive anticipation. You've got to set your mind ahead of your situations and understand that what you're going through right now is momentary. It's temporary. It, 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 it's not meant to be an identifying factor in who you are or what you will become is simply meant to cause you to stand up, take, take, take a stand, square your shoulders, hold your head up, look forward and trust the design. The designer designed you to withstand adversity. The designer designed you to withstand forces of negativity and setbacks. You are built for this. I'm going. I'm, I'm challenging you to to, to 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 go out today, knowing there's absolutely nothing you are going to face in this world, nothing that you can't overcome. It may seem dark, dreary, painful. It's going to be uncomfortable. You you if you really want to be successful in this life, I'm I'm going to tell you something that a lot of people 
don't tell you. Because people like selling you what you want to hear instead of telling you what you need to hear. And until you become comfortable with being uncomfortable, success is always going to be slightly outside of your reach because you're going to be intent on sitting back in that corner of comfort. It's not until you come out of that corner of comfort that you start to lay hold of things that people considered impossible. You have so much potential inside of you, but you're gonna to have to reach. You're gonna to have to become committed to going the distance. You're gonna to have to be committed to falling down and getting up, dusting yourself off and pushing forward. You're gonna to have to be comfortable, you're gonna to have to become comfortable with being ridiculed, laughed at, talked about, and hated. Because see, as you begin to rise, you, you move into rare air and rare space where fewer people are willing to roam because it's uncomfortable. You're going to have to invest in yourself. You're going to have to do the things that are necessary to be everything that you want to be. It doesn't come cheap. And I don't mean just money. I mean time, energy, heart felt investment in becoming something that's not easy to become. You weren't built to be like everybody else. There's a uniqueness about you that you need to be nurturing. On that note, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. As I always say, live your life on full. That's my goal. I tell people all the time that the first part of my life was about me it was about me getting what I wanted, going where I wanted, doing what I wanted. And somewhere in my early 30s, I found out that there was no amount of money, no amount of women, uh, no matter how many shoes and clothes I put into the closet, no matter what type of uh, whip I drove, that was an emptiness I couldn't shake. And it was my purpose. And so I said, well, I've given the first half of my life to self-service. Uh, selfish, selfish endeavors. Even when I was doing something nice and giving, that was about stroking my ego. Look at what I can do for other people. And then I made a decision. I want a legacy. Because see, these cars, eventually they go. These clothes, eventually they go out of style. All of this stuff. And then when I went through what I went through, I also found out all the adulation and uh, uh, attention I was getting from people was more about what I had than who I was. And that got to me. And so I said, the, next, the, the rest of my life is going to be about building a legacy. It's going to be about being the best me I can be. It's gonna be about touching lives. It's going to be about helping people become what they were designed to become. I wanna leave something to this world that says I was here. Something in this world that says I came, I saw, I conquered. Something to leave this world that says the world is just a little bit better because he was here. I'm challenging you to do the same thing. On that note, I'm getting out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. And we'll be, uh, I'll be talking with you soon.
conceptual stuff. People talk about it. All of the elements they say intelligence, expertise. What other doors could they close? Hey, how much am I willing to give up and are not committed to the struggle? Acquiescing to the struggle. They're committed. 